welcome everybody to the GSC Invitational. GSC Invitational number two. The first one happened just under a year ago. I'd say half a year. So in case you're wondering, this is going to be a pretty interesting event with about 32 players. And I figured before the main event starts, I might as well would show you the replays of some of the play-in players. Now, for the most part, these play-in players are in. Um, however, the outcome of the match does determine their, their positioning in this tour. And before we begin, I just want to say that it is a don donation-based uh, prize. All the prize will entirely be, be going into the hands or pockets, rather, of all of the players. So make sure that if you do want to contribute in some way to donate, also join the Discord. Okay, so let's get right into it. So this is going to be one of the two finals for the play-ins because the play-in players had two slots to uh, to basically qualify. We have D4 Repertoire versus Nolorium. All right. So we got Nito versus uh, Laxlead. Nito going for an immediate counter. Um and unfortunately revealing the counter. However, Nilorium is going to go for the HP Ice, still dealing some, uh, still allowing D4 Repertoire to make pretty decent use of that, as the Zapdos was uh, threatened by Ice Beam. I might have used Sleep Talk there. In comes the Starmie, and then comes Raikou. The Starmie reveals to have Psychic and perhaps also Surf. It's going to switch. Nalo's going to switch to Snorlax. D4 going with that momentum. Setting a Toxic on the Lax, um, luckily manages to avoid the Paralysis. But he does not stay in a second turn for those spikes. I might have gone for spikes myself there. Now he's going to try and fight back with Raikou and Titar. Raikou is going to get poisoned by Nalo's spikes. And he has quite the advantage here, as he can't switch in his uh, Cloister. So, um, not on a Lax, not safely at least. So he's going to bring in his Titar as Nalo is riding that momentum. Goes directly to Marowak here. Goes for a safe Rock Slide as D4 has not yet revealed any um, flying type in the back. So you have to wonder, is it double elect or something like that? I don't think so. But anyways, Chloe finally comes in, gets those spikes. Uh, Nalo could have probably gotten two for one with that Marowak, but whatever. Um, Zapdos revealing to be Whirlwind, so very interesting set indeed. I don't know how well it fares against Curse Slax as Zapdos Phaser goes out, goes down. Now, Nalo can still respond with what I believe to be a Boom, boom Cloister. Dang it. Um, my messages, I'm receiving messages and I have a silent phone. All right. <clears throat> so where were we? Yeah, there's vibrate. I have to remove that. So I was just saying here that the Zapdos goes down to Lax and as a result, N Nolorium loses his phaser or one of them. And uh, he's really threatened by curse Lax here. So he has to watch out. He could boom. Chooses not to, which is probably the smart play. Um, or maybe he doesn't have Boom. Maybe he has. But in that case, I would have gone for Rapid Spin if he did have Rapid Spin. So, um, yeah. T-Bolt there. D4 has no normal resist. Um, we don't know if Nolorium has one. Very odd sets indeed. So... Both of them are phasers, and we do in fact see a second Zapdos that does have a Whirlwind. So two Zapdoses with Whirlwind and Protect to defend against that. Yes, the Gengar does make some sense. I mean, you have to have at least one switch into Double Edge Lax. And now the Marowak is dangerous, yeah, is in a dangerous percent there. It's going to go down, and... Uh, this is looking rather dire for Nalo, but at the same time, 
this Zapdos can't can't use Protect or Whirlwind forever forever. So yeah, I think with the Raikou, he should D four repertoire should be in a pretty good position. I think he's favored here, but I don't really know. Uh, of course, it's not out of Nolorium uh, Nolorium's possibilities to just win if he plays his cards right. We do see Crunch Raikou, which is not typical. Are we gonna? Is it gonna boil down to a Lax War? I might go on fast just for the sake of things speeding up a bit. Is a full para gonna happen? Nope. Okay. So it's Lax versus Lax. We still don't know if it's uh, EQ. It would be kind of surprising to see EQ Lax on a on this sleep talk set because uh he has a he had a pursuit tar and it would be kind of a little bit on the passive side Ooh, okay he uses rest i might have gone for t-bolt there but actually if he had thunder yeah but t-bolt no not as much he has no electric resist either so these two electrics are going to be pretty handy um of course, his Cloister can also be helpful at getting... If he can just get some damage on that Gengar, then that'll be good for him. But one way or another, someone's going to have to go down. Someone will lose and someone will win. It is a best of three, though. So, goes for the Thunder. That Lax was not quite in range, but... Actually, it was just out of range by very little. Yep. What is D4 going to do? How is he going to respond to this Gengar? And there's the EQ. I'm not surprised, I, but I just don't understand the idea behind it. So he does scout very intelligently for the D-Bond there. Raikou outspeeds, so Gengar cannot stay in and fish with D-Bond. Uh, and if the Lax takes a special defense drop or something, then it could be trouble for him. Nope. There's going to be a lot of back and forth here. So we have Curse, Sleep Talk Lax versus Curse. Sorry. Sorry. Thunder, Sleep Talk Lax versus Thunder EQ Lax. So Nalo is going to... I don't know what he's going to do. Is he going to spin? He is going to spin, sacking the Starmie. Not sure how much I agree. Uh, now he's down three Mons to two, uh, to five. Why did I say two? He does get value out of the lack of spikes, but D4 is just going to bring it right back. And this time, no spinner. Unless, of course, that cloister is a spin. But only time will tell. <clears throat> of course, with no curse, it's not easy for either of these players to win. They're just going to trade blows, and the Sleep Talk EQ Lax is a has an advantage as it deals more damage overall, like on average. As, as you could see right there, Thunder deals only 12 to Snorlax. All right, time to speed things up just a bit. See where this is going to go. I'm not even keeping track of the turns here. A speed tie could be crucial. No, D4 does not win that speed tie. But he could get a crit. No. Okay. Is this cloister going to threaten to boom, or is it going to fake the surf again? Probably, yeah. What I expected. Now, if I'm Nalo, I would probably go back to Lax here. Oof. This is what happens when you don't have Curse on your Snorlax. Very awkward situation. EQ doing 21%. And this is a, a very atypical Lax War. Usually you see Curse versus Curse, but... Who's going to take home the first game? Who's going to take the first win? Gengar switches in on 
that and now d4 is running out of double uh, sorry of uh, sleep talk pp as is nelorium kind of forcing each other in a switch into this uncomfortable situation but it's going in uh, d4's favor here because if that lax runs out of pp then well he has only two left then even neo king and the other mons can can handle it quite quite well <coughs> Of course, now wouldn't be a good time to sack your uh, lax. Yeah, good call by D4. Going to the Raikou, suspecting that that uh, Gengar only meant trouble. Destiny Bond, calling upon Mean Look. Back in comes the lax. Nelorium manages to burn some sleep turns without using Sleep Talk. And Cloyster comes back in. He won't be able to hold this up forever, though. <laughs> In fact, no, it doesn't do it. If he could force that lax back into using rest, then uh, it could be pretty well, pretty good for uh, D4 here. But he's going to take that D double edge, and Elorium's going to make the hard call and stay uh, awake so as to force D4 into an unfavorable situation here. Nelorium getting lucky with that roll. Is he going to win the speed tie? No, he loses his lax, and now it's curtains because the Raikou wins, and Nelorium just immediately forfeits. So we're going to move on to the second game. Second of possibly three. It's a best of three. Let's switch the sides over again. See what happens. So um, here we got <coughs> D4 on the bottom once again. And let's get right into it. Jinx lead versus Jinx lead. <laughs> okay. As D4 switches to his lax, which I can only assume is a sleep talker, and Nolorium's Jinx is thief, as is the other. They None of them are... <laughs> this is awkward as hell. They're just using thief on each other, because if you didn't notice, thief is super effective. It's dark type, so it deals just perhaps a little bit more damage than Ice Beam or Psychic would deal. Um... Plus, anything switching in would obviously lose lefties. Um, D4 deciding to go for a couple of thieves before using his Lovely Kiss and unfortunately misses, and then he gets to the Lovely Kiss, finally. But is it really worth it after all of that? Um, is he going to manage to wake up in time? Nolorium wakes up and steals lefties from that Zapdos. He's going to be able to switch out here and get more value than D4 got. So, um, I don't know. Rather awkward exchange. Um just to avoid uh, having leftovers stolen and what did it did it pay off i don't think so d4 is at, at the very least he has a spikes advantage so he's gonna he has one turn advantage here perhaps two so he could even go straight to jinx or zap as a nelorium took his sweet time setting those spikes up his cloisters now poisoned but he's gonna call the bluff he's gonna well actually since it's poison he can stay in and surf that jinx and that's one mod down. Now his uh, Cloy is uh, severely weakened. Nelorium better hope that D4 doesn't have a Golem in the back. And uh, the Gengar lands Dynamic Punch. There's the Golem. Now Golem has to worry about this Zapdos here. D4 is smart enough to scout for the hidden power. I mean, well, not really scout, but, you know, because he doesn't know based off the damage, but he's going to figure... He figures that it could be risky, is what I'm trying to say. Nelorium uses yet again another Whirlwind Zapdos, which is pretty interesting. Takes a crit from the Hidden Power Ice. So D4 Zapdos is in power. And, uh, prob yeah, it's HP Ice. Uh, might not have survived that Ice Punch from Gengar if it were HP Water, so, um, yeah. <clears throat> Making some pretty nifty doubles there because he goes to, um, yeah. Wait, I'm 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 missing some things here. Okay, so he goes to yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, he called them all chess pieces. Okay, he named them after chess pieces. And there is a pretty nifty crit on that Gengar. Um, Nolorium could have. Judging by how he's playing and how it's slightly different from his opponent's team, 
Um, I don't know. He could have a special attacker in the back. Maybe that's what he likes. Um, otherwise, a Steelix isn't to be ruled out here. D4 is going to boom on that Jinx. Just, uh, okay, Nido King. Not what I would have expected, but uh, interesting to say the least. It's not Lovely Kiss. And it's going to get a crit on that Golem. Now D4 is in a awkward position here. He's going to have to get a good roll with that Sleep Talk. Otherwise, his Lax is dead, and he's not going to win. He gets not, not what he needed. Good damage, but not quite what he needed. Is he going to... Yeah, he's going to make the aggressive call. It's a good switch there. He's going to recover his HP back. And in the hopes, perhaps, of weakening that um, Nito. Of course, with Spikes, if Nolorium switches in his Lax, he could take a Thunder, as you saw there. That would have done a lot, and the Lax would have been in range for sure. D4 is going to switch to his Cloy. But at this point, it's almost hopeless. Nolorium has... Uh, Quite the big advantage here. I didn't exactly expect a Nido King of all things to be in the sixth slot, but it did seem like he was going to have something atypical, not really a, a Steelix because of the Whirlwind Zapdos. So, um, and now his Lax is in range, so now we are one even really fast compared to the previous game. Jesus. So, on to the last game. Last game, of course, this time. Nolorium's on the bottom, but we're going to switch sides just for consistency's sake and play out the third game. Best of three, one even. Cloy lead versus Jinx League. And once again, we see one of the pieces, but this time named differently. Is D4 bluffing having a different team? We do see Thief Jinx this time. So Nolorium does stay in on that uh, Jinx because Thief is just actually very valuable Lef leftovers is one of the most valuable items and i mean it's the the single item that is used in this tier so cloy on cloy action nolorium's gonna get a, a toxic on zapdos which is nice but not as long lasting as having toxic on cloister so with no recovery that cloy is gonna be in trouble and here we see steelix um acting as a pivot to allow Snorlax in. Really good play from Nalo there. And his Lax is likely a sleep talker as well. I gotta say, they, are, they came prepared for Jinx, that's for sure. And D4 once again bringing in a Golem. Yeah, I kind of feel like he's bluffing having a different team. This is, looks like it's just the same thing with uh, inverted names. In the last game, uh, I believe that the Golem was called Pawn. Uh, if he spins here, he basically forces the Cloister to use Spikes again, and then he won't be able to come back in a second time, or the chances of that happening are very low. So, um, yeah, he's going to, D4 is going to go to his uh, Gengar. Is it mean look, Gengar? Um, is it something else? He's he's not really going to attempt to scout He's uh, for the Lax's set as he goes to his Golem. And he's probably going to take an EQ to the face. But possibly worth it. He could go to Zap here or Cloyster. As Nolorium brings in Exeggutor. Exeggutor seems to have a pretty good matchup against this team if it weren't for the Jinx. So Nolorium is going to play off of that knowing this and he goes to his own Snorlax. And there's the EQ. So all four moves have been revealed. Zapdos coming in here. This time it's not Whirlwind, I think. But we do see T-Bolt. Okay, well, it has Reflect, so maybe it is Whirlwind. Because it's not Rest Talk, I think. I'm not sure. I'm at a loss here, honestly. So the Lax is dealing some nifty damage. 23 plus the added spikes to that Eggy is nice to see, that's for sure. Eggy's going to spread some left, uh, some Leech Seed damage and essentially force a switch as D4 is going to immediately go to his Zapdos. Is he going to use Rest? Yes, he is. That's slightly worth it. 
Goes to his Gengar. Yeah, he. I bet he really did just... Yeah, he's going to go to his Cloister here, which is a good call. Predicting the uh, Steelix switch in. He's going to get some uh, some nifty status on that zap. <clears throat> Nello has one last shot to cement his spikes as it goes down. Um, good call, as the chances of D4 getting his golem back in are not very high, especially with that eggy there. Not many things can switch in. So the Zapdos is in. Going to stay in. And do we see a Hidden Power Water? No, it's just a regular Hidden Power Ice that got a critical hit. The more you know. Cloyster comes in here, can boom for a lot of value, actually. Um, <coughs> sorry, guys, but I, <clears throat> I'm a bit sick. Okay, so in comes the Zapdos, which does reveal three out of three, three times... It's a whirlwind zap to us. So um, Golem's forced to switch out. It's hidden power ice this time around. So uh, as it dealt super effective damage on D4 zap, is uh, D4 going to get a good roll? I mean, anything is a good roll at this point. Well, besides missing. Oh, man. That's pretty... That sucks. Wow, from like out of the frying pan into the fire, am I right? Gets paralyzed. What's he going to do? He's going to rest. Okay, fair enough. He could just... Okay, he, so he loses his Zapdos, but uh, I guess on the bright side, D4 still has his Lax, so that's not too bad. Goes to his Jinx, as Jinx is pretty valuable and can switch in easily on the Aggie, even with um, Giga Drain. The only thing it really fears is hidden power fire, but it doesn't look like that's the case here. Goes for a lovely kiss, uh, interestingly enough. I don't think that was a great call. I would have... Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> I, I could be wrong, though, because in, in hindsight that might not have been too bad. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, we still don't know what Nalorium's last is, and this time D4 manages to get a boom, and he's in a pretty good spot. He Can can he boom a second time? Oh no, we see Starmie in the back. That's actually something that could be quite a threat. Um, D4 sacking his Jinx, interestingly enough. Um, hopefully he, for himself he has a curse, curse talk, but we're about to see as it's EQ. Yeah, <laughs> the first sleep talk move revealed. And uh, this is pretty bad for him, actually, because uh, Starmie has a good matchup, and it's not a spin Starmie. It's uh, it's a bluff. It has likely has sub-nightmare. There's the sub, nightmare, surf, and recover. So this thing checks sleep talkers really good. Uh, unless D4 can get a good uh, series of sleep rolls, he's, uh, he's in trouble. So if he can play his cards right, and you know that'll be good. But those uh, those two boom mons in the back are virtually useless, as they're all weakened. So they can't even uh, stay in and boom. So it's all it all boils down to this lax here. Maybe he could bluff a move. Okay, so he burned a rest turn. And, uh, yeah, well, this is pretty bad for D4, because every turn he's just forced to go back into clicking rest again. So we're going to speed things up just a bit here, folks. As uh, this is um, <coughs> a proven set on Starmie. Ever since... Uh, the GSC Cup from, I believe, 2019 or 2020, introduced by, well, pioneered by two players that I haven't, that come to mind, Solkata and Fear. It's really just um, been so good, and people have been finding more and more builds to fit this Starmie on, and it's a great win condition for the likes of Lax. 
which is one of the most likely mons to live until the end of a battle. So, yeah, it's good against... Uh, it's I'd say it's decent against uh, even non-sleep talk, you know? Actually, it's even better. So, and there's a crit. So now, the Lax is barely in range. Yeah, I think that was a roll. Pretty sure that was a roll. Nightmare again. How many surfs left? 12. Like, that's the other thing. It just uses up the turns so efficiently. And D4 is just forced to, to keep going. Okay. That could have... He could have paid dearly for that. Okay. Uh-oh. Actually, the lax isn't entirely hmm i don't know if i agree with that play hmm i guess he forced him into using a little bit of extra pp there very weird it's gonna be very weird so eight eight pp left can he get a crit can he get a crit it's all boil boiling down to the starmie but regardless of the outcome, we've seen that it's a threat. Like, you, it doesn't have to win for us to realize just how potent this set is. My, oh my. He's trying to get the Lax to expend his PP by using Nightmare. Uses one Surf, has only three left. It looks like... Oh my... How's this going to go down? Goes for an EQ. Even with that... Hmm. Surf Nightmare. The Starmie has not used Recover a single time. But I can assure you that the fourth move is that. So, even with all this, yes, D uh, Nelorium uh, seems a little bit upset in chat at, as how he played... Uh, perhaps his mid or end game. Um, things didn't work out quite well uh, as he had intended to, but nonetheless, we're amazed at how he played. So if you guys like this series, please stay tuned for more GSC content, especially for the GSC Invitational.